All right, welcome back everyone. This is episode 10 of our RPG series. Today's episode, we're going to be um, creating knockback um, for our attack. So let's get right into it. Let's go to our player uh, attack detector. What we're going to do is we're going to, same thing, we're going to connect our area entered and we're going to just copy paste this guy. And okay, so hopefully you've kind of gone through the process of how how is this going to work. So what we want to do is because the skeleton knockback already exists, all we want to do is knock it back, right? So how do we do that? Well, we kind of have this line right here. So this is to set our own knockback and knock us back, right? So how do we do that in here? Well, we have area.getParent. So we can just do that. So area.getParent knockback is equal to the area.getKnockback direction. Um, also, I've set this to one just so that we can kind of see if it's actually working. All right, and we're going to set this to 100. Now, my question to you is, do you think this will work? This right here. Well, first of all, no, because we have player detect, which is, I don't know, that's right, actually. Um, so yeah, my question to you is, this, will this work? Let's play, let's test it, let's see if, what happens. All right, so it does not work. However, if you look very closely, it's kind of hard to see. If I attack, it's sucking in the, the, the zombie because it is actually knocking it back but in the wrong direction. So what we actually want to do is make it minus. So let's try this, attack, and it works. So we can knock back our, our zombie now. Awesome. Uh, another thing we can do is we can just do area don't get parent health minus equals five. I think that we made it health for it, right? Yeah, we did, okay, awesome. Let's make it 15. Um, and then what else, another thing we can do, uh, let's just test this to see if we can actually attack. Awesome, so it works, it dies. Um, there's no death animation, so that's it. <laughs> um, but another thing we can do is we can player area detected, here we go. No, and here, when I, when I get knocked back, so this is hostile detector, we want to reduce our own HP. So game.playerHP minus equals five, I suppose. Then we can play, do this. Or what we can do actually is we can, We'll create a damage. Let's do this. Do damage equals five. And we'll take that damage and we're going to subtract it here. But we also have to get it by doing area.getParent.damage. Um, the reason we're doing this is because if I ever add another monster that's not skeleton, what it's going to do is it's going to check if it's, if it's a zombie by asking a player to detect. Um, and then it's going to get that all right, so it's going to get the the body itself and then check for the damage and see how much damage it does. So now I don't have to do this. I don't. I want to go like, okay, match the name with um, skeleton, right? So that's just a big waste of time. Instead, we can just add this one line and it'll save us a lot of time. So now uh, let's actually change this and add 50. So now if I hit my zombie, it'll knock me back and just constantly <laughs> kill me. And wow, he is stuck to me. Yeah, so let's actually make this 150. So that way it's quite a bit. Awesome. And now what we're going to do in our physics process, I'm going to check for our HP. If HP is smaller than or equal to zero, what we're going to do is we're going to get node, no, not get node, sorry, get tree dot change scene to, we're going to have to make this, um, 2D scene. We're going to do game over. We're going to just save it right away. We're going to put it, we'll put it right here. Save, go to back to our player, and we will change scene to game over. There we go. So now, now nah, I don't want to test this actually. But this should work. So every time our HP is under zero, instead of dying, or well, we will die, uh, we're going to go toward game over scene. So we'll edit this out later. Um, but just so we know that this is our game over scene, we'll add a label and say game over. There we go. We will put it right there, center, center, put it in the middle a little bit, and close that. All right. Um, so now 
we should have a functioning game where I get hit, it subtracts my HP, I can hit it, whoops, there we go, and I can kill it. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to create a way to kind of check the play the skeleton HP. So how are we going to how are we going to do that? Let's so let's go into our uh, skeleton. What we can add is a progress bar. So there's also a texture progress bar. If you have your own texture, which actually we do kind of, but at the same time we don't, um, you can use that. But we'll just do a regular progress bar. And in this progress bar, first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the visible um, for our skeleton. We're going to theme override uh, style. We're going to go to FG and BG. We're going to set our FG actually to new style box, I think. And then here we'll set this to green. Uh, green. Oh no, sorry. Um, if I do 50, it should. You know, we're going to have to change this back to style font. And I think that should. Nope. How do I? Where is it? FG should be the empty. Let's let me double check this in my reference. So I'm going to go to ah uh, where here we go. Okay, so our Um, no, okay, sorry. So here we go. Um, we're going to set the FG to that. We're going to set this to this new style box. And we're going to set this to green. So there we go. Now we have 50 should fill it up. So it's strange that it's not. Oh, there we go. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, oh, here we go. Value, minimum value. That's why. Okay, I was trolling myself. So minimum value. And then we have the other value. Let's go back here, productive, red. Okay, there we go. So if our percent is full, sorry, 100, if our HP is full, it's going to be all green. And then as I'm emptying our HP, it's going to be like that. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to function ready, to create a ready function. And we're going to get node dot uh, progress bar. We'll do um, HP, we'll name it to HP. So I can rename this to HP. Dot max value equals health. And then in our physics process, we'll actually do um, value as well. So we'll set the value equal to health. And then in our physics process function, we're going to want to set our value. We're going to want to update this every five seconds or every second, basically. So in our HP, let's go back here. Let's pop this right above our player, our skeleton, I suppose. And we'll pop it right above his head. Or we can put it right under. It's up to you, really, but I'll put it under, actually. And we'll make it look like an HP bar. Go here, we play. So now our skeleton has a little HP bar. If I hit him, the thing goes down. Awesome. There we go. So now our, our skeleton has an HP bar. Let's add one for our own. And I think that'll be it. That'll be about 10 minutes. Um, let's go to our UI. Let's go to here. Let's add a progress bar. You know what, actually? Here's a fun little thing we can do. Uh, let's go to, let's find the path that our skelly is in. And so what we can do is we could go to UI. We can merge from scene. And we have to find our skeleton. So world objects, monsters, skelly. And we can take this guy right here, HP. And then we can take this and just make it a lot bigger. And then we can make a UI script, because I'll have a lot of stuff in here later. And then um, first thing we'll do is we'll make the label inside. We'll have the, um, yeah, we'll have the text update as we go. And then for the UI, what we'll do is we're going to copy over this, I'm going to go to UI, ready, I'm going to copy that over. Then we're going to make a process function, physics process, that's fine. And then we can take our value 
And then our health is not actually health, it's um, game.player health. And then we'll copy this over here. And then this will be game.player max health. Awesome. So now we have a pretty big HP. Let's make it a lot smaller. Let's make this a bit smaller as well. Um, can I change the size? Yeah, let's change the scale. Do 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And then I can pop it in here. And then I can just center it. And I'll make it look a bit nicer. Okay, I think that's fine. And then let's launch our game. Now we have our HP bar because I only have 50 health. Oops. And then I get knocked back. And there's our HP bar. Awesome. Uh, what we can do to make this look a bit better is we can go to our label, go to theme override, we can go to color, go to outline. No, we'll, we'll keep it white. We'll go to style. Ooh, no, not that. Not style. We're going to clear that. Is it fonts? I think it's fonts. No, here we go. I think it's this one. Nope, not that. You know what? I'll be honest. I think it's in font. So to font. Let's actually double check it's in font. Um, outline. Yeah, okay. So it's in font. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll make a... Let's put this in. We'll put it bold. We'll do make unique. We'll go to setting. Go to outline size. We can do one. That's fine. Outline color. Not sure why it's black and then it says white there, but that's fine. Um, but now, yeah, now we have a bolded out HP bar. So now it just looks a bit nicer and cleaner. And next video, what we can do is we can use tween to make this a bit smoother. So right now it's very chunky. It just, every time it goes minus five, it just goes boop, boop, boop. So we can add a tween. Um, I'll add it in right now. Smoothly, and you can see what it does. Smoothly animates a nose properties over time. So we'll use that to animate it, essentially. So that'll be fun. Um, what else can we do? Soon we will be doing inventory stuff and drops. Um, another thing I want to do is we have the HP bar, but it's also really nice if we hit the player or the, the zombie and a little text box shows up of how much damage I did, right? So we'll do that next time. Um, but for now, this is good. We have a good RPG game, which is nice. So I'm going to end this episode here, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And like and subscribe, comment, and share.